All right. Um, next up, we're going to have John Johansson presenting on LSM stacking and namespacing. All right. Thank you. Um, so, as Stefan said, LSM making the LSM. Basically, we want to make the LSM available to containers. Um, currently, it's a real problem. So, what is the LSM? It's uh, provides security in Linux. So, it's a kernel kernel subsystem. Uh, you often see it associated with Macs when they talk about it. So, SE Linux, AppArmor, but it actually is used by Yama, LoadPin, uh, there's Tomoyo, and then there's a whole bunch of other proposed LSMs out there that haven't been merged yet that want to do other things than Mac. Um, and the problem with the LSM right now is that it, you get one, one subsystem in the kernel. It's shared by all your containers. Um, it's not what we want for, uh, it's not what we want for containers, and the problem is the LSM doesn't want to be namespaced, not really. Um, we can have multiple LSMs uh, enforcing at the same time, we'll talk about that in a second, but it's very limited, um, and the reason the LSM doesn't want to be namespaced that up there um, is it's providing security for your system, right? So when you if you bring up your container, say you're on Fedora, whatever, and you have a SE Linux running, it's running on Fedora. It actually has policy that's controlling and confining what that container can do, and it's protecting the system from the container. Um, and so that's the big reason that they don't want a traditional, you know, here's your little uh, uh, namespace off on the side. What's wanted by the LSM is to be able to have the system enforcing something and maybe, you know, have the container having its own. Um, not every LSM has the same requirements. Uh, Yama or LoadPin certainly don't have the same requirements as SE Linux. Um, so, we can do simple things to have we do have multiple LSMs. This was landed in uh, 4.2. This was uh, landed by Casey. Uh, what it does is it gives us what we call a major LSM and a minor LSM. There's a limitation of a single major LSM. Uh, so you only get SE Linux, you only get AppArmor, or you only get Smack uh, or Tomoyo. And then you can have a minor one like a LoadPin or a Yama. Uh, anything that doesn't use basically uh, the, the data structures. So the LSM provides a service to the, 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 the modules, the security module, and it provides a set of hooks. But along with those hooks on the internal data structures in the kernel, there is a, a security blob that the, the module gets to use. Um, Casey has been working on bringing us uh, better LSM stacking. He's been doing this for a long time now, um, almost five years. And the idea is to move the security blob management, which is the defining feature of a major versus a minor LSM, into the infrastructure that's provided by the LSM subsystem in the kernel. Um, it's not quite so simple, though. Um, So c container LSMs, that they, they can't get, oh, sorry, <laughs> they can't change the LSM that the system has, right? So you're going to have to have something more than that. Uh, you can't change the policy rules of the system. You got, you're going to have to do your own rules separate. Uh, all these LSMs with the way stacking set up is, are defined at boot. Um, so say if, if you did have stacking working, major, the major stacking working, when you bring it up, say AppArmor and SE Linux, your host system has AppArmor and SE Linux. It's not just, say, the container. Um, that's not really what you want to do. Um, so right now, the other problem is like app containers, you, well, I've been talking mostly system containers, but app containers, uh, there are app containers that have started using uh, LSM policy, uh, Snappy does it. Um, 
And it would be nice to be able to make it available to other system or app containers as well, I, I should say. Uh, problem is the kernel infrastructure was never designed for sharing. So this has made the, the problem, the, this has made fixing stacking issues for Casey really hard. Um, so we start with the user interface problems, right? The, the interfaces that provided for the LSM, they were never planned for it. So we have the proc PID adder star stuff and the SOP sec. Uh, lots of services use these actually, like if you do PS minus Z to look at your, uh, what your confinement is. And so how we have to handle this is we basically divert, we virtualize them. Uh, we give them a per task definition and say, well, you're under this LSM, even though multiple LSMs are running. Um, and that works okay. Uh, we set it, so the interface, we set it the default. So when you boot up, you get a default LSM. So it looks like maybe you just booted up with only SC Linux, but you maybe have AppArmor and SC Linux at the same time. Um, and then new interface versions are added. So these can be used, but they have to be picked up by, uh, they have to, you have to extend your user state based applications. So PS minus Z, before it to, for it to know about the other confinement besides the default one that we're virtualizing, you have to update it to be able to read the, the new interfaces and use them. So that's, you know, libse Linux needs updated, libapparmer needs updated. Uh, the PS tools, uh, there's several other tools, top. That's not too bad, we can get there. We're working on it. Um, networking, networking's the real problem. Uh, there's these awful things called sec IDs in the kernel. They're a 32-bit number, they have no lifetime. They're exposed to user space. Really poorly exposed to user space at that. Um, they're all, all we can get into the network subsystem, the subsystem maintainers won't give us a full pointer or anything to work with. Uh, they're used by the audit subsystem. They're global. This, none of this really works for container. I mean, if, if you have, say you're booting a SE Linux system and you want to, want, want to run a container with SE Linux on it, the container and the host are going to share that same num number and that's not what you want because it can't distinguish between them in the networking system. Um, so what, what Casey's been working on and doing here, this is, this is a work in progress here, is virtualizing the whole SEC ID number. So there is a single global SEC ID number, but the infrastructure manages virtualizing it and combining them together, finding a new one. It's kind of ugly, but it's about all we can do. So we have to remap these at runtime, and we still have lifetime issues with them. Uh, that still have to be resolved, and that's going to take quite a bit of work to fix in the kernel networking stack. Uh, another one is SecMark. So I don't know if, if you know what SecMark is. If you've written IP table rules for SE Linux, you will. The problem is SecMark is exposed to user space, and it was never really planned for having multiple LSMs at the same time. Uh, the way the networking is set up right now is you're, you get a user namespace and your network namespace is tied to a user namespace. But uh, the SEC ID itself is actually global and doesn't fit in with this model. Uh, and the SEC mark being converted to the SEC ID. And so there has to be some work there that has to be figured out yet. Uh, but unless you have uh, two LSMs that are trying to compete on the sec marks at the moment, we can kind of work around it. Net label stuff. So we're talking Cypso, Calypso, XFRM. They weren't designed for this either, and it's a huge problem. So we have a few potential solutions, one of them being you only get the label if they both agree. So say if you have something stacked, I don't care, Smack and SE Linux, and they are trying to label a packet, the packet will only actually get, go out if the labeling from the two are the same. If, otherwise, you could also have a fallback and say, as long as only one of the LSMs is trying to label it. Otherwise, 
there's not a lot of space to actually handle and combine things on these. Mostly, thankfully, they're avoided. Uh, LSM stacking is not namespacing, however. It's a good start, um, but it's still not providing what containers need, right? So, like I said, you bring up a system, you bring it up, say you want AppArmor and SE Linux available, you bring up your system, they're both booted, your system's booted with both of those on the system, on the host. That's not what you want. Um, so, what we need to do is we need to extend LSM stacking, right? The current situation, right? Maybe we bring up all three, and the system has those, and the containers have those. Uh, it's no good, right? Even worse, none of the LSMs originally were written with uh, namespaces in mind. So IMA, they've been, they've been discussing it, and they have some patches where they're starting to provide some uh, namespacing for their audit and a bit of bit of their infrastructure. Smack, uh, it has some patches to provide labels to namespaces, which is important part of the work, but actually isn't namespacing Smack itself. They do have a weird thing that they have a little used thing called uh, per process rules that they, Casey thinks that they could use for namespacing, but it, he's not working to that level yet. He's still working on the stacking end of things. SE Linux has begun the discussions about namespacing themselves. Uh, they sent some stuff out to the mailing list in October. And where they're really at right now is they have a lot of global state. And if we're going to containerize this, that global state has to be moved off and, and set up so that they can have namespaces. And that's where they're working at mostly at the moment. The audit system is still a uh, work in product progress as well for namespacing. And that's going to be needed because both, well, SE Linux, AppArmor, and Smack all call into the audit subsystem. AppArmor is the exception. Um, it has its own policy namespaces. It does virtualize its interfaces, and it does have an internal stacking separate from the LSM stacking we've been talking about. That's a product of how it's doing some of its policy. Um, and that can actually be leveraged to do stacking and some namespacing today. So LXD does support doing a, a, an AppArmor on AppArmor's confinement container. So you could have a system with AppArmor and then boot a container that has a system with AppArmor. And they'll both have their own policy. Um, this is, again, separate of the LSM stacking. Um, But the LSM infrastructure is not our only problem. Um, we're missing security blobs for namespaces, so a way to actually set up namespaces in the, the kernel system and store information there. That's got to be added. Uh, we need some new hooks in the system to get every transition we need around namespaces. So namespaces, if you follow the kernel at all, they're not. We don't have a container concept in Linux. We have a whole bunch of different namespaces. And there needs to be a better integration for this to happen. Um, a big one is attributes, right? So if you think of SE Linux, when it's got files, it stores um, its labeling on the files in uh, the security X adder. And to do namespacing, it's got to namespace that X adder somehow. Uh, the security X adder is already namespaced off of the security module. So when you go to the security X adder, you go to the SE Linux namespace. So SE Linux has to come up with a scheme that's backwards compatible that they can namespace their labels inside there. And the same idea goes for SMAC as well. This will also make X adders larger. Uh, so when you run a container that's writing X adders, uh, it can make the uh, the X adder quite large, which is going to be a performance problem. We've had pushback from the file system people about that, but you just have to do it. There's, there's not much you can do elsewise. Um, and there needs to be some kind of interface to set up an LSM namespace. We don't, have, we don't have an agreed on interface. We don't have a consensus on what that should look like or exactly what it means to uh, namespace the uh, LSM, but we're, we're coming to 
a, something that might work. Um, so I, remember I talked about the default LSM a while ago and how in a stack you could, there was, it, to support the old interface, you could set that each task could have its own a, a default LSM, what it's expecting to see, and that could be changed. So the idea basically is LSM stacking already can, can recall back into the LSM modules multiple times. So we can, we can extend this and I'll support it per task instead of just at system level. And so that becomes kind of the namespace there. And what we do when you're in a namespace, which is a list of LSM stack, so you could have maybe five LSMs on that list, whatever, is we can subset which LSMs in that stack you can see. So when your container's up, it only cares about and only can see that it's got app armor in it. Um, on the system, its namespace, it doesn't see app armor, it only sees SE Linux. And so with a very thin layer uh, on top of the stacking, we can actually simulate what's a namespace on what the existing uh, stacking patches are. Um, and that also provides the ability for a namespace to extend, or a container to extend that namespace stack. Um, that's about there. So uh, this is all, has been a lot of work, like I said. Casey's been work on, working on the stacking stuff for about five years. I picked up some of the, the namespacing stuff and started looking at LSM stacking namespacing last year uh, so that we could get this working with containers. Uh, App Armor team has done a lot towards providing container support. IMA is now working on it. SMAC is, the SMAC team's working on it. SE Linux people are working on it. And the LXDD team uh, have pulled a lot of work so that you can actually do and use that, that AppArmor feature that was added so you can do container on container with uh, AppArmor. Um, unfortunately, I did have a demo, and unfortunately in the grand tradition of presentations, it broke this morning, when I, and I couldn't resurrect it before uh, other presentations. So, uh, any questions? So stacking of uh, LSM modules more than one level down, uh, will this be a big performance and uh, how it is going to be in implemented in the kernel? Because uh, more than one uh, LSM module, sub-module uh, is a problem in the moment. So more than one LSM sub-module isn't a problem. So the way the current stacking is set up is each LSM hook point actually iterates down a list. And so there is a performance impact, uh, and it depends on your LSM what that performance impact is going to be. So right now, say on Ubuntu, when you boot your system, it has three LSMs on by default. It has uh, AppArmor, it has Yama, and it has capabilities. The capabilities actually run as a LSM, as the default LSM, and they're actually always used, but they, they run through the same infrastructure. So. The system is already running three of those. Adding another one, it depends on the LSM, what the cost is going to be. Each LSM has a different cost. And so there is an incremental cost every time one of these hooks is called because if you have four LSMs, obviously you're walking down the list four times, right? So for containers, what we're trying to do here is, like I said, take that list that the system already has and instead of making it system-wide, you make a, an LSM namespace block that has the list of hooks. And so only tasks within that set work, are gonna have to do that extra hook, right? So when you open up your, say, Fedora container on Ubuntu, it's gonna boot up and it's going to, if, if it's set up right, if we can get the LSMs cooperating, you'll add the SE Linux hook, hook to that set of list. Of, so now it's a list of four. Even if you have Yama, uh, Fedora does have Yama, it can share the other hook that's already there. 
So we're not, we're not adding an extra Yama hook call out. So we're adding one extra layer for that one. And only the container incurs that hit. Um, there certainly is a hit. Uh, and like I said, it, it's very dependent on your uh, work case, workload. Uh, I have not done any benchmarking of it. This is still early days that we're actually booting AppArmor and SE Linux together and getting containers to run like this. And we're happy, just happy getting that far right now. Sorry, I don't have a better performance range for you. Yeah, one thing I can mention quickly as the you know, next team member, like what we're, in our case, what we're most looking forward to is like first thing, it will let us run um, CentOS or Fedora, but any of the Linux, of the standard Linux distros on top of LexD on Ubuntu or Debian or anything else, really. Um, the other thing that's going to be interesting for some folks is um, being able to run Android inside inside containers that also do use the Linux. Um, so that that's going to be another you know, game changer once that work is done, merged, and working. We're getting very close. We're, we're at the point now where with those branches, we can get reasonably easily um, AppArmor um, enforcement in containers on top of an SA Linux kernel. Right. Uh, the other way around is still a bit tricky. The, the other way around is a little bit trickier. I, have, I did have a demo of it. <laughs> um, so the reason it's more tricky is because SE Linux is labeling the objects. So if you don't have SE Linux labeling the objects when you boot your system up, the container orchestrator, whatever, however you're setting it up, is going to have to do some labeling of anything that you're bind mounting in, right? Any, any kernel object, any file system, any mount that hasn't been labeled by SE Linux has to be labeled before it can be bound, bound mount into a, an SE Linux container. And that's, that's where the difficulty is right now for that. Um, the other one that I, that's a use case like, so Snappy, this would allow you to run Snappy applications with the confinement on Fedora, where today what happens is they fall back to what's called a classic mode with no confinement. Um, Docker images, we could, we, can, we could have Docker then uh, on some of those images. They do have some AppArmor support. We can extend it now with this so that they can load up on, say, Fedora and have an AppArmor profile there on Fedora. Uh, ideally, we'd get to the point where they could have an SE Linux profile within their Docker container if they really wanted, or Smack or something else, uh, which would bring you Tizen apps too, possibly, just like Android. Any other questions? Oh, there's one over there. Yes. So basically, uh, because you would have two um, systems running, so SLinux Linux and App Armor. So one is like non namespaced, the other is namespaced. Uh, is there any chance of having conflict, or would the main uh, module still override the one which is being used within the container when it comes down to, let's say, doing uh, control over uh, file access permissions when it comes down to like shared volumes or something like right. that. Right, okay. So how it's being done is both of them will be consulted. Um, and for, for permission to be allowed, both when, when you have them both on the list, they both have to say yes. So say I boot up a Fedora system and there's an MCS label they put on the, the container and, then, and, the, and my container is an Ubuntu system, right? When I go to access a file in that container, AppArmor is gonna be consulted and says, can, can you access this file? And SE Linux is gonna be consulted and it's gonna say yes or no as well. And so they both have to agree and allow it. If either of them disallow it, then it won't be allowed. So the idea here is, again, the host confinement on that container is still being applied. Uh, and then the container itself gets to add extra confinement on top of that. Yeah, and to be clear, that's, that's needed because you can switch, the process can switch its own display LSM effectively. So it can switch between a Linux or Palmer, and you don't want that to be an obvious way of bypassing the, the pre-configured LSM system. Any other question? Oh yeah. 
Yeah, uh, any chance we could see like mount labels on by mounts? Um, so there's, that's one of the things that is still needs to be worked out. Um, there's, there's cases where labeling is not very good, right? So bind mounts, what you, you get to see is you don't get to see, there's no label on the mount structure in the kernel. It's on the underlying object. Um, there is the default, you can set a default uh, context for a mount, but it doesn't apply, it applies to the whole and everything underneath it. If it, the, I mean, the SE Linux has, you can set context equal and it applies to everything under the mount, or you can set default context and it, it applies to anything that isn't labeled, right? Um, we would like to get to where you could virtualize and see only what you can out of that, the other one being the file system is difficult right now, depending on like how, how you look at the XAdder, how to virtualize that as well, so that the container doesn't go out and say, when it goes and looks at that file, oh, I can see the host label as well on that, right? So that's an area that still uh, needs work. Anything else? Oh, back. yeah. Uh, all the way up. It sounds like this work could be useful to allow ordinary user accounts to use security modules to contain their programs. For example, if you're compiling something you make and you want to make sure it doesn't write outside the source directory. So, yeah, uh, the LSMs are used to confine user accounts. Uh, you could conceivably have different users under different LSM confinement. Um, I, I don't necessarily know of anybody planning to use that, but it would be no different than, say, running uh, your, con you know, your application containers under a different confinement, right? Yeah, so I think the use case was discussed here would be effectively uh, every user would be running under, under some kind of confinement profile right. with a namespace set up so that they can themselves load additional profiles so that then his makefile can ah. load a, a policy for his makefile to right. make sure that doesn't it, it can't read anything other than the source code it's meant to build. Yes, okay, so that is uh, possible. Um, the question is how, how much you open it up and where you open it up. Uh, do you open your policy loads? Are you comfortable to open them up to um, anything beyond? Yeah, how, what kind of scrubbing are you doing on them and how, how far do you open them up? Do you open them up to just container root? So the, the namespace root, whatever you want to call it, user namespace root, or whether you open them up to regular users. Um, this isn't available in AppArmor yet, but I can tell you that actually that is a use case that AppArmor has planned for. Uh, they have not opened up the uh, ability for a user to load policy into a namespace yet. Um, that being able to do that, you have to be really sure that you know the user's not going to break something when they load their policy, uh, and that's something that has to be properly vetted. It just takes a long time to get to that stage. Anything else? Guess not. All right. Thank you very much.